of Romans, chapter number 13. Romans, chapter number 13. I'm glad that the men had a good fellowship last night. Appreciate all of you men that came out for that, and I appreciate everyone that went with us up to Hamptonville last night to the service at Marler Road, and it was uh, just a blessing to be able to look out across there and have my, all my family and and uh, some of our folks from here at Welcome Door. That sure does help when you go to a, when you go out to a visiting church. Romans chapter number thirteen. Well, today's Valentine's Day. Amen. Thus the red tie and the red vest. Amen. I didn't wear this red vest all day. I didn't want to be a target. But uh, I want to talk to us tonight out of uh, Romans chapter 13. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 8. And I'm going to read the balance of the chapter down through verse number 14 for a text tonight. And the theme of Valentine's Day is what? Love. So I, I don't really preach on love enough, I guess. But I want to preach on it tonight. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul really, he really spends some time here in this passage of Scripture really expounding on the subject of love. And um, what we find is what we've titled the message tonight, the essence of Christian conduct is love. Everything we do, our motive should be love. Love for God. Love for our Savior. Love for souls, love for the church, love for one another, love for our families, children, and the list goes on and on and on. So if you have your Bible open to Romans 13, look with me, beginning in verse number 8. And Paul says, O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill. To his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The essence of Christian conduct love. Father, we ask your spirit will bless the reading of this precious word of God tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll take your word and speak to the hearts of your people. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for your filling and anointing to preach your word tonight. It's been good to be here already to sing, to give, to fellowship, to hear good singing. Lord, now as we look at these verses tonight, we pray that our hearts may be tender to the Scriptures. May we take in and absorb what you have for us tonight in this matter of love. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, of course, the Bible speaks about love so much 
that you'll never be able to encompass all that the Bible says about love in one little sermon. So I'm going to try to confine myself just to these verses tonight for a few moments and, and preach about how that the essence of our Christian conduct uh, lies in our love and what he's dealing with tonight is our love one for another. It really dictates all that we do if you think about it for just a moment. I think you'll agree with me in that statement. Jesus said in John 14 and verse 15, If you love me, it's conditional now, uses the word if. If you love me, how many of you tonight love Jesus? Say amen. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. The Lord Jesus also told us in John chapter 13 and in verse number 35, He said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if, there's the, another conditional word, if ye have love one to another. So let me see if I can get another amen. Uh, we've already amen that you love God, and he said, Keep my commandments. Well, secondly, can I get an amen? Do you love one another? Well, then that is our witness to the world at large that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ, that we are his followers, we are his believers. We are his family if we show the world that not only do we love God by keeping his commandments, but that we show the world our love by our love one for another. Now the Apostle Paul shares this principle with us here in these verses in Romans 13, verses 8 to 14. However, he puts a little twist on this principle of love one for another and love for God. And the little twist that he puts in it we find in verse number 11. And the little twist is that he emphasizes a sense of urgency in serving the Lord now because of the imminent and soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice he's talking about love in every verse, verse 8, 9, and 10. But when he gets down to verse number 11 and uh, following, he says, and that, knowing the time. Well, we know what time it is. We know that the time is last days. We don't know when he's coming, but we know that he is coming, and we know that he is coming soon. And he says in that knowing the time, that now it is high time. Did anybody ever use that phrase with you when you were growing up? I don't hear it much today. But uh, I used to hear it a lot from my mom when she would get my report card. And she said, it is high time, Michael Bryan, that you start paying attention and doing better and getting better grades in school. It means it's now time, not tomorrow, not later on, but now. And Paul said it is high time that we awake out of sleep for our salvation is nearer than when we believe. Now he's talking about the completion of our salvation. Now we're saved and we're on our way to heaven that transaction's done at the moment you put faith in Christ. But let me tell you something. When you put your faith in Christ, you got saved from the penalty of sin. When you put your faith in Christ, you got saved from the power of sin. But when Jesus comes again, you're going to be saved from the very presence of sin. No more sin. So Paul said, it's time to wake up. Our salvation is nearer than when we believed. 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I have just a couple of thoughts I'd like to share with you now from this passage of Scripture. And both of them deal with love. The first thing I want you to, to notice tonight is that love fulfills the command of God. Our love for God, our love one for another, our love for sinners and the lost, our love uh, uh, as a Christian, the Bible says and it tells us that love fulfills the command of God. Notice in verse number 8, the Bible says there that love fulfills the law by paying our obligation to our neighbor. Now you know when the Bible speaks of your neighbor, it's not talking about the person that lives next door to you. It's not talking about the person that lives across the road from you. Your neighbor is anyone that you come into contact with. Anyone that God intersects with you in your day, that is your neighbor. And the first thing that Paul wants us to understand is that love fulfills the law of God by paying our obligation to our neighbor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now to get a little bit better understanding about what he's talking about owing, we have to go back one verse to verse number 7. And he says in verse number 7, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Now he spoke about fulfilling the law. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 13 is one of the parts of the law that Paul was dealing with. He says in that verse, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. In other words, Paul is saying that we're not to be in debt to our neighbor. Owe no man anything. We're to, we're to keep the tally at an even keel. We're to pay what we are to pay. We are to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. We're to render unto God the things that are God. But we are also to render unto those that we come into contact with no, no debt but other than to love our neighbor. So he tells us that love fulfills the law by paying our obligation to our neighbor. But then we see here that that little verse in verse number 8 speaks to me in one word. And that word is honesty. I be believe the 8th verse talks to us about having our love for our neighbor, but it should be an honest love. Now today, I'm sure at least through the United States. I don't know if any other countries celebrate Valentine's Day or not. But I'm sure there were lots and lots of people who gave cards and candies and little stuffed animals and balloons that all said, I love you, be mine, I'm yours forever. And probably didn't mean one word of it. probably just did it because they were just expected to do it. But you see, the love that God expects from us should be an honest love. Honesty in our love towards our neighbor. In verse number 9, he goes on and says, For this, and the for this is referring to what he just said in verse 8, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, 
And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the second thing I want to bring to your attention under love fulfills the command of God is that love fulfills the law by loving your neighbor as yourself. I've never met too many people that didn't love themselves. I've met a lot of people that were really crazy about themselves. and They were alleging in their own mind. But uh, the Bible says that we're to will fulfill the law by loving our neighbor as ourself. And notice the behaviors that he puts on the forbidden list as a child of God. So verse number 9 speaks one word to me, and that word is integrity, doing the right thing. But integrity is doing the right thing when nobody is looking. That's integrity. Doing right when nobody's looking. I could put a negative word on verse 9 and use the word hypocrite. And he tells us not to be a hypocrite, but he tells us to have some integrity. And if we're going to tell our neighbor that we love him, then our life better have some integrity and back up the words of our mouth. In verse number 10, I find another thing that the Bible says that love fulfills the law by doing. This is in verse 10. And love fulfills the law by doing your neighbor no wrong. Doing your neighbor no wrong. Look at verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now so we see here in verse number 11, I think of another word that this verse of Scripture describes. And if you're writing it down, it would be the word compassion. We're to have compassion on our neighbor. We're not to seek to take advantage of our neighbor. We're not to seek to defraud or to deceive our neighbor that we may have an advantage over them. No, no. The Bible says that we're to show compassion unto them by doing them no ill will. Paul told us in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 13, 14, and 15, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Let me read verse 15 again. And in exchange for the word bite, Let me use the definition of that word. And in place of the word consumed in that verse, let me use the definition for the word consumed. But if ye cut and wound and devour one another, take heed that ye be not destroyed one of another. Paul says, throughout the Pauline epistles, of which Romans is one of, Matter of fact, Romans is the first one. And he says that love fulfills the commands of God by loving your neighbor, by paying your obligation, having honesty. Love fulfills the command of God by loving your neighbor as yourself with integrity. And love fulfills the law of God by doing your neighbor no wrong, but by showing him compassion. I've heard it said by preachers, some in a joking manner, some in a serious manner, but it is a sad commentary on our belief system. I've heard them say that Baptists 
are the only group that shoots their own soldiers. It shouldn't be that way. That should not be said of us. It should not be said of us as a whole. It should not be said of us individually. Now the second little thought that I want to share with you tonight in the message is found in the remainder of the verses, verses 11 to 14. And here's the thought I want to share with you from these verses. Love seizes the opportunities to show Jesus to others, knowing that time is getting short. Let me say that again. Love seizes the opportunity to show others, show Jesus to others, understanding that the time is getting short. Now I've already expounded a little bit on what I wanted to say about this as I was introducing the scriptures in the message just a moment ago. But the first opportunity that Paul shares with us in verse number 11, is that it is the opportunity now to wake up and realize that Jesus will be here soon. And if we're ever going to do anything for Him, now is the time. Not tomorrow, not next week, not after we retire, not when we get older and don't have anything else to do, which by the way, when you retire, there's plenty to do. But now is the time to get busy for God. He says, wake up for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. But not only did he speak of the time to wake up, but he also said there is the opportunity that we need to show Jesus to others because the time of the unveiling of the day has come. Look at verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. What day is at hand? The day of the coming of our Lord is at hand. And so he gives us two activities that we need to do. One is a casting off and one is a putting on. Look again in verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. We need to get sin out of our life. If we have sin in our life, we need to repent of it and get rid of it. Quit trying to hide it. Quit trying to cover it up so nobody will see it. But you want to continue in your sin because you enjoy it. Living that kind of life is like that crowd of farmers, those swine farmers that lived over in the Gadarene countryside where the maniac was in Mark chapter 5. And Jesus came and delivered the demons, the evil spirits out of that man that was in the graveyard and he put them into the swine. And the farmers came and run him off. What they basically were saying to Jesus, we wanted you to fix our problem, but we wanted you to let us keep our pigs. And my friend, the Lord's not going to allow you to keep your old nasty pigs in your life. You need to ask for forgiveness and repent of those sins and, and get rid of them. There must be a casting off of the dark things in our life. And then there is to be a putting on of the armor of light. We're to let the world see who we are. We belong to Jesus. We live for Him. His life for mine. Did you hear the words that Sherry was singing to you tonight? How could it ever be? His life for mine. And because He went on and didn't stop, we're going to go on and not stop because of what He did for us. Putting on the armor. In verse number 13, we see a third opportunity. And that is that it is the time, my friend, to protect our testimony. Now is the time to protect our testimony. Let us walk 
honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. That's misbehaving. That's getting out and stirring up troubles. Not in chambering and wantonness. Uh, that's, uh, that's lust. That's sexual sins, perversions. He says that we need to walk honestly, not in troublemaking, not in uh, lustful and sexual perversion, not in strife and envying. Can't get along with anybody. It's time to protect that testimony. And then in verse 14, he said it's time church to start letting others see Jesus in us he says but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof Jesus said ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Pray for Brother Roscoe Bowden supposed to preach for us Sunday morning and Sunday night. He did get to go home from the hospital. They got his heart back in rhythm. Praise the Lord for that. God bless you and let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Father, thank you for this little lesson tonight from your precious word about love and how it is the very essence of our Christian conduct really is who we are. It defines us. It dictates our behaviors. Father, when we're not fulfilling the law, when we're not fulfilling the law of God, when we fail to love the Lord, we're failing to fulfill your law. Help us tonight to hear what thus saith the word of God and take it with us. Dear Lord, we may have a revival of our love for you and for one another. Dismiss us with your grace, we pray. Lord, please bless that funeral tomorrow. In Jesus' name.